Yeah, welcome everybody to the World of Abil- World of Ability Podcast Network. My name is Emily Gomer and a podcast engineer here. And we're excited to bring you another episode of the World of Nutrition with uh, Marilyn Lemaire out of the lovely state of Hawaii. And um, we have a couple of great guests today on health and nutrition, health, wellness, and so on. But I'm going to bring Marilyn in here to get us kicked off. Hi, Hello, Emily. Welcome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Welcome to the World of Nutrition podcast, and this is Nutrition for Your Body, Mind, and Soul. Today, we have two fantastic guests who I'm really thrilled to hear from. First up, we have Danya Bayoun, and she is a founder of Fierce Muse Coaching, where empowerment, creativity, and transformation coverage for ambitious professional women particularly those grappling with imposter syndrome and silently wrestling with self-doubt and confident issues. Danya meets her clients where they're at in their journey, weaving a narrative coaching and positive psychology into her sessions. Her toolbox is diverse, incorporating NLP, breathwork, meditation, mindfulness, quantum linguistics, polyvagal theory, and trauma-informed coaching. Her transformational session, her transformation, excuse me, her transformative sessions are complemented by post-session homework learning lab, which is crucial for applying newfound insights to daily life. Her journey has been eclectic from managing a law firm to heading a flourishing floral design and event business before finding her true calling coaching. With a background in psychology, a graduate degree, and certifications as both a professional and executive coach, she seamlessly channels her innate ability to connect with people into translating their visions and helping them see their potential. Anya, thank you so much for being here. Tell us a little bit more about you and what you do. Thank you, Marilyn, for having me. I'm I'm very excited. Your smile is so bright; it's just shining straight from from Hawaii to the screen through the screen to LA. Um, I'm very happy to be here. Um, it's great, I think, to share how we all perceive what we do as part of health and wellness. So yes, my journey to coaching has been circuitous from managing a law firm to owning a design boutique and to kind of in the pandemic realizing since there weren't any more events <laughs> to do something else. And this pause that we all got to experience during the pandemic gave me time to reflect as well as all of us about how I could be better and who else I can be other than just a designer. And this is kind of where coaching comes in. I'm sure every coach would tell you coaching chooses you, you don't choose it. That's a calling that has probably been always in the back of my mind. And now it has a name and that's kind of what I feel privileged to do. That's so beautiful. And so during the pandemic, that's when you decided to just dive into coaching more. Is that? Uh, I did. I I believe that when I was working, managing the law firm, it was a kind of coaching. I'm not an attorney, but I was managing the back of house and then the client's expectations and billing and their relationships with, um, you know, all the other staff and whatnot. So there was some coaching there just to help them um, be heard and feel like they understand the process and, and where their part in it is. And really the same when I moved on to design, because it's the same thing, the client in the law, they're coming at you at their worst time in their lives. In an event, they're extremely happy. They're getting married or they're having a corporate event or they're decorating their home, but it's also stressful. So it's another kind of coaching to take their vision, the feeling, what they'd like to do and translate that. And then during the pandemic, yes, I went back to school and got certified. And um, because it's kind of what I love to do that getting that rapport, that one-on-one time, that sacred space, between coach and, and client where um, there's enough room for you to to just come undone if, if that's what needs to happen. And for you to um, come to some certain um, realizations about your potential and the coach's job is merely to help you from where you are now to build a bridge to where you deserve to be, where you ought to be. I love that. I love when you said come undone because sometimes we need to unlearn what we learned, right? And Absolutely. just start all, all new again. So I love that. So this is the world of nutrition, nutrition for your mind and soul. Please tell us how, what you do incorporates into your body, mind, or soul. 
I believe in coaching the entire person, a holistic approach, because we are all of these things. We are body, mind, soul, spirit, energy. So what I do is I work with professional women, driven, ambitious women, usually in their mid-40s and, and beyond. And we work on building confidence from within. We work on understanding imposter syndrome, controlling the inner critic, and being able to find craft and embody the woman that this client aspires to be. And how it fits really nicely with what you do, Marilyn, what we're all here to share today is because very much like um, you go to the gym to work out so that your muscles stay in tip-top shape, you do yoga so your mind is clear, you eat healthy so on a cellular level you are healthy. But this is the same thing, but it's for the woman within. It is building a strong relationship that you have with yourself on the inside and it's trying to learn um, to be mindful and be present while these thoughts are coming at you from every which way and building the resilience to be able to bounce back from your inner critic who thinks you're no good, you're worth nothing, you're never going to make it. So there's a lot of um, internal exercise, if you will, in building up the woman you wish to be so that she can lead. The, the ultimate aim of my entire coaching practice is for you to become, to ascend into your own fierce muse, your own really powerful, um, empowered uh, muse. And you let her lead the decisions instead of having your inner critic or your wounds lead you, which I promise you, you don't want to go where they're taking you. Wow. So please tell us um, maybe something that you've learned or ha helped with one of your most recent clients. This is something I do with a lot of my clients. And most recently, actually just last week, we, a client and I were working on the definition of motivation and where does one, especially for women, because most of my work is concentrated with that, where does one lead oneself? And then sometimes you want to ascend to the next level, but something stops you. There is almost an inner glass ceiling. And it's not the one that perhaps society has put on us because we're all familiar with that. It's the one you have on the inside that your inner critic has put for you. So it, you, you want to do something or you feel like, yes, I can probably um, you know, ascend to this next level, but it stops you. So the work is the awareness of what that is, how to dismantle it, what are the tools to build it up. And one of the, the smallest things that can be used in the moment is I have a... Uh, like a seven step process that I teach my clients right when you're about to make a decision and the decision has been hijacked by your inner critic. And it's like CPR for the decision because your highest self steps in and goes through these very small steps to stop and pause and breathe and reorder the thoughts. So you're able to make an empowered decision and then work through the obstacles so that you can crush your glass ceiling. And every woman can, should and deserves to do that. That's so uh, beautiful. That reminded me when you said motivation of one of my mentors talked about the difference between motivation and a uh, discipline. Mm -hmm. I would love to hear your take on your um, discipl uh, discipline and motivation definitions or how you help your clients to think, distinguish between the two. That's a really great question. When you have something that is pushing you, because discipline all of us want to be disciplined. Think of January 1st. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to do this. I'm, come March 15th. Yeah, they're out the window. So discipline is a different kind of muscle, if you will, on the inside. There is something that is pushing you. And when you push something, there's friction. So there is a lot of effort in pushing something towards an end goal. Motivation is something that pulls you, your vision of who you wish to be, your vision of the life you deserve to have, of the woman you aspire to be. It's like a magnet. It attracts you. It pulls you. So when you're pulled, there isn't much effort in it. So you're able to get there with a lot less friction than being pushed while you discipline yourself, if you will, to the finish line. At least that's my take on it. I love it. And so tell me like how mm, when women work with you do they um work with you for a certain set of time or is there um month by month or a year process i'm curious the it's really broken into two pieces so primarily the first leg of the journey is a six-week program called the muse method and it's where we really dive into what is the inner critic where does she come from whose voice is this what is imposter syndrome 
then break down where these things came from in your childhood. So it really, it's not surface work, it's deep work, hence being trauma-informed and, and um, lots of tools. So we're able to pull something from here, something from there, even down to you know, linguistics, quantum linguistics, the words you are using about yourself on the inside can be very damaging and we're unaware of the hideous things we tell ourselves all the time. So the six weeks builds, if you will, your toolkit and shows you a plan. When these thoughts come about, when the imposter is on, when your inner critic puts on her heels and decides to run the show, what's your plan? What, what are we gonna do to stop that? And upon finishing the six weeks, if they so choose, they can ascend to a longer program where we work on your fierce muse in all the aspects of your life your spiritual life, you in relationships, you as a woman, um, how you want to be, what, what is the um, vision you see for yourself and how do you plan to show up in the world? Now, sometimes I will also do um, smaller things, let's say like a boot camp. It depends, but primarily it's, I, I don't want to take my, my six weeks and, and, you know, crush it because you don't get the same thing. But sometimes we pick one item and we really go to town on it. You mentioned a few times about imposter syndrome. For people who don't know what imposter syndrome is, what is your take? What is your definition? Imposter syndrome is the constant companion of every achiever. Because if you did not care about the result, you wouldn't have this feeling of, oh my gosh, did I do it right? Uh, did I fail? Did I not? So an imposter syndrome is just one of the threads of how our inner judge shows up. And your inner judge shows up as your inner critic, as body image issues, as shame, lack of gratitude. And one of them is imposter syndrome, where no matter what you do, no matter how well you perform, no matter what uh, awards, what presentations you've nailed, whatever it is, the imposter says, but but it was by luck, it, there was nothing to do with your effort. It just happened. It could have happened to somebody else. They picked you by mistake or my favorite. Any moment now, they're going to find out you're a fraud and they're going to come and take the degree, the corner office, the whatever it is. So it's a constant battle on the inside with an inner voice that dislikes everything about you. <laughs> so how are we going to show up shiny and bright in the world when this is your inner narrative? I love that. Oh my gosh, shiny and bright. That is I, I can see when people are working through themselves or working on themselves, they become lighter and brighter and shinier, right? And their eyes. Have you noticed that within your clients? Absolutely. There is a literal glow to someone's face when the shift happens. And I, I always live for that because suddenly you realize better is possible. Suddenly you realize you're in charge. You have agency. You can become whomever you choose to be. And confidence is not innate. It is learned. And once you, you read and you're willing to do the work, because listen, nothing is for free, right? You have to put in the effort and the cost. And the cost is going deep into the wounds. The cost is time and stepping out of your comfort zone. But yes, you are shinier, newer, better, brighter, because you're realigning your energy, right? You're choosing how are you going to show up? Where are you going to be brightest? It's it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. That reminded me that Carla and I have been to a women's leadership event at uh, different times. However, what I learned, and I'm sure Carla learned as well, is as women, we do not really know how to balance our feminine and our masculine energy. And that was an eye-opener for me because I had been operating with my masculine energy pretty much my whole entire life, not realizing that if I could balance and find that beautiful um, synergy of my feminine and masculine that, you know, magic happens. So I would love to hear, you know, how um, you recognize that and how you bring out more feminine energy or help your clients to balance that feminine. Without, without a doubt, probably one of my single favorite subjects in the world. We are all a bit of both. Like there's a yin and yang. All of us have a little bit of both. And usually you're comfortable in one domain or the other. And that's not to say that you don't step into your masculine, which requires certain ways of being when things need to be followed in a certain way. But I think as women, we have been mistaken thinking that I could only be logical, analytical, whatnot, and, and use that paradigm and kind of 
push the other one to the side, really to our detriment. Because imagine your edge in the in the boardroom, your edge in negotiations, your edge in any relationship. If you could speak both and you are able to kind of dive into the wondrous world of the feminine paradigm, where we source our um, validity from within, where you source your inspiration from kind of a layered approach, just a place where all of your senses are kind of open and feeling. It's so much richer. It's like um, HD when you've never seen it before. So that's how how I see it. It's it's one to, you know, operate in the expected male paradigm. But then imagine if you were able to bring the other one online, you would be really quite amazing. Yes, please. I, I mean, if you're able to, I would love for you to share a couple of tips on what you do to help women bring out that feminine energy. I'm um, learning more about this every day because I'm like, okay, like so much um, male dominant energy, you know, for over 40 years. And I'm like, now I want to tap in and hone in on my female energy. Oh, that's beautiful. So one quick thing that kind of comes to mind is the word softening. And I don't want... um there to be any preconceived notions and anything feminine is weak because it is absolutely the opposite. So when I say softening, there is a a time where you just take some time to yourself and shut out all the other things and really pour all of your attention, just like you do on your Excel sheet or your children or putting together your taxes, laser focused. But I want this laser focus to be on you, the absolute energy that's alive and whirling within you. And a softening is to soften your senses, to just open everything up, kind of like turning on channels on video and listen. Listen for things you can hear, things you can touch, the breath you're breathing, what you can see, a softening. So what you're doing is you're opening up your horizons as a human being, and you're inviting all of these things in. You would be surprised how when you have all of your senses on, and you're utterly, completely in the woman that you are, there's almost a... uh, like a magic, there is a, and you feel it, you sit a bit taller, you, you, you're you bright, you feel like you tapped into some power. And, and I always tell my, my client, it's like being able to wield a laser beam that you just found out you had, right? Then it's pretty amazing because you realize you as women have a lot of power, but it starts in mindfulness. And instead of going outside, go within, not on social media, not seeking validation, not likes, not filters. No, no, no. On the inside. Listen to the woman all the way on the inside and allow that softening so you can grow because something rigid does not grow, Marilyn, right? But something that has kind of amorphous borders is able to grow in ways you probably can't conceive as we sit here today. Wow. And what what about journaling? Do you encourage your clients to journal? For sure. And if you're so inclined, some people feel like they don't want to, and that's all right. But I feel like when you put your thoughts pen to paper, there is magic because you suddenly own this thought and it doesn't own you. And you're able to go back in time and you know track your growth as you read. The thing I say is, please don't edit. Don't think of who's going to read it. Don't think, should I use this? Just, just put it on paper exactly as it is, right? So that you're able to see how you're growing and see where perhaps some of the spaces that need some of your attention are as you kind of look at your thoughts and and where you're going. And I always encourage that after um, meditation or sitting down and doing some light breath work so that you're able to kind of hear within. And um, I always share all of my clients. I walk them through the meet your muse meditation. And that's exactly the best time to journal for real after is when you go on this almost hypnotic journey within and actually meet the woman you've always wanted to be. And when you come out of that, there's a lot of downloads probably for the next week. So I tell them, please, first thing in the morning or before bed, actually listen what she's trying to tell you and put it on paper because it's massive growth that happens so that is beautiful I love it so much yes (laughs) thank you and um, please tell us how can people find you Uh, the best way is to reach me on LinkedIn because that's kind of where a lot of my clients are so it's 
LinkedIn is Dania Dash Bayoun. And I believe I sent you, I have, you can email me. I sent my Calendly link. You can book a time with me as well. And then I have um, put my seven steps, the little kind of process that takes three minutes and it's guaranteed to work. Just as a gift, there's nothing to sell. If people would love to learn it, just download it, learn it, internalize it, own it, so that the next time the thought comes about, you are prepared. And then if you'd like to reach out and work with me, I'm still running my um, news method as individual one-on-one. -on -one. I haven't kind of ascended to a program that's a group, but I will soon. And when I do, I'm going to have less time to spend one-on-one -on -one kind of a, a signature time with my clients. So if you'd like to reach out, it will be my privilege to help. Thank you so much. Yes, and please get that seven-step gift that Danya so generously gifted to all of us. Any last words that you want to share with our listeners today? I'd like to leave um, your listeners with a question. Um, I would like them to ask themselves the following. Ask yourself, um, what would your decisions be? Where would your choices take you? What would your life look like if you let your fierce muse make the decisions instead of your inner critic? You'd be unstoppable. That is so beautiful. Thank you so Thank much you. for being Thank on. You. Thank and, you. Uh, yes, you're so welcome. And next, I would love to introduce our next guest, Dr. Carla Garjaka. She is the CEO and founder of Foundation Matters and Globally Brighter. She's a visionary leader dedicated to empowering individuals to thrive and reach their full potential via a foundational appro approach. With nearly 30 years of experience in educational psychology and a passion for holistic well being, Carla's mission is to provide transformative workshops and interventions that inspire us to embrace authenticity and live their best lives. Fluent in three languages and a pro prolific uh, pro of four books and six ebooks, Carla's accomplishments underscore her commitment to making a difference in the lives of students, parents, and the community. Her unwavering de uh, dedication and belief in the power of progress serve as a beacon of inspiration to all those she serves. Dr. Carla Garjaka, thank you so much for being on. Please tell us a little bit more about what you do. Oh my, thank you so much. First, I'm so honored to be here with this beautiful friend. Love you so much. Thank you for inviting me. That's such an honor. Yeah, so um, that's my passion. I've been in the educational field for almost 30 years now. So I just love and the more I am in the field, the more I get intrigued about the mysteries of our mind, brain, and body, um, you know, and all the complexities. So I like to be the detective of our brain and my passion about, um, you know, the brain led me to also investigate our, which I consider the first brain that we have in our bodies, which is our gut, right? So that's why I am one of the few nutritional psychologists in the country because it's still a field that it's very unknown and some people are still questioning whether do we have one brain or two brains. So it's very interesting and it's a very challenging field, very complex, um, but I'm here and that's why I'm always doing research and I writing books and, you know, just going and learning forever learner I would say yes you are and I'm constantly learning from you so this is the world of nutrition podcast nutrition for your body mind and soul what do you say ties into what our listeners would love to hear from you for me uh, nutrition is really the foundation of everything because um, we take for granted that our brain needs nutrition <laughs> Right. When we think about anxiety or depression or even headaches or whatever is happening in our head, we think it's only in our head. But if we really analyze, we need to nurture our brain. The brain needs water, nutrition, you know, vitamins, minerals, it needs everything. So I for me, it's still very interesting that psychiatrists and psychologists are still not convinced that it's not all in your brain. Like, how are, are you nurturing your brain? There is so much data 
nowadays about the importance of nutrition. And that's why for me, it's such an honor because the more we talk about it, the more, and people really realize like when you're anxious, you feel butterfly or sometimes you have you have stomach ache or, you know, it, it really affects everything. If you're very stressed, some people eat a lot. Some people don't eat at all. Right. So there's always a connection. So I just uh, don't understand why people don't think it's such an obvious, you know, correlation. So if we want to take care of our mental health, we need to take care of our physical health and what, how we're nur nurturing our bodies. And I think nowadays, um, Sometimes I do a lot of different um, lectures and one last year I did one about food and it was very interesting because people don't know what food is anymore, right? Because food is when you're nurturing your body. Are you really eating food? Are you nurturing? Because if you're just eating something just to get this kick and you're not really eating food, you're just eating whatever trash right you know uh, you're not really you're going to have all those issues so it's just my passion and that's why I'm, I'm so you know honored to be here <laughs> oh, thank you that reminds me I just recently went to a um, session with a frequency doctor who showed that there's different frequencies on the foods that we eat so I would okay. love for you to share a little bit more about that on what you know yeah. Oh my God. This is, and that's the beauty because we are, I just did an event. Yes. Two days ago, I think I'm doing so many events, but it was about pure fuel. Right. And we're talking about perfume. So the, the scents that we have are so synthetic nowadays and really affects our limbic system. So we, we, we have a machine that reads the energy, the frequency of your body to see which organs are in lower frequency and we combine with essential oils or with some herbs that your body needs to raise the frequency of your body. So it's very interesting that some of people needed cilantro, oregano, you know, thyme, right? To raise the, depending on which organ. So we are basically, our organs are frequency. If all the organs are in the right frequency, right? We don't get sick. We were just, you know, living a healthy, happy life. But each one of us, when we are stressed, some specific organs, it, it could be related to genetics, like my family, all of them have a lot of issues with thyroid, thyroid can, you know, a lot of things. So I know my thyroid due to genetics, it's, I have to pay, take a look at the frequency. And I know um, when I get stressed, the thyroid might, you know, it really gets affected. Uh, so it's interesting how, which essential oils or which food I can eat or I should not eat, right? Should I avoid like crabs is very terrible for thyroid if you have thyroid issues. So the more you study uh, seafood, it's very interesting. You, you should really avoid if you have thyroid issues because it lowers the frequency. So if you really understand your body and understand that we are, in, we can go frequency lower or upper, you know, it, it's just, for me, it's so amazing how beautiful the frequency and, you know, uh, quantum physics, it's really teaching us a lot about that, right? When it comes to psychology and of course, what you guys are doing. That is so beautiful. And I would love for you to share about the books that you've created, the eBooks, the regular books, and what's in the works because you are helping so many people out there. Yeah, yeah. So um, last year I opened uh, my nonprofit, which is called Foundation Matters. Um, and it is based on the newest trend of medicine, which is foundational medicine. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. So we have the functional medicine, which is very individualized. So if you go to a functional doctor, which that's where I took, take my kids, you know, since they were babies, it takes forever. It's a one-on-one thing, but late, more recent research, they were finding out through functional medicine that everybody needs a foundational medicine. It doesn't matter if Marilyn or me, or if you're man, boy, girl, we need some foundational skills. It's like building a house, right? You need a foundation. Every house, regardless if you're building an apartment building, 
a small office or a three gigantic house, you need a good foundation. Doesn't matter what, right? So and that's what happens with our bodies. You know, we need a good foundation. And I dedicated some years to understand what were those foundation skills that leads to a healthy mental uh, health state. Um, and it became, uh, so it, it's up with six layers, right? And that's where I'm writing the books. Um, whenever I do lectures to really help and educate people about those six layers and how we can empower ourselves at home. You don't need a doctor. You don't need a psychologist. You don't need anybody. You just need yourself to really understand. It's very easy. So uh, the acronym is um, actually the name of all my retreats. When I talk about those six layers of foundations, take a breath towards happiness. And the word breath is the acronym for the six layers. So the B, which is breathing, we don't breathe anymore. The way for us to raise our frequency, like breath work is amazing. And you, if you combine that with essential oils, good ones, pure ones, right? We have to highlight that as well because essential oils like rose essential oils, there are some amazing essential oils that just, you know, helps you with the frequency. So Breathing, so I do some ebooks on breath works, and then there are rest, sleeping. Most of us nowadays don't sleep well, and so I have some ebooks on you know high sleep hygiene, what we can do before going to bed, and you know what we should do to you know why melatonin taking is not the best. You know we have to really understand the frequency of your body during the sleep. Uh, so you detoxify your body to cleanse and you, you regulate and can have a healthy new day. So, and E is eating nutritional foods. So you can, you know, um, nurture your body, soul, mind, everything. So we talk about that. So I have books on toxicity, you know, all the brands that you can rely on and why you should avoid other brands. So it's very, it's almost a hundred page ebook on shampoos conditioner everything that you can find and with all the brands that i did a research that you can buy and it's a trustworthy brand so those are the things that i do to educate a lot and then on food as well i did one only for parents on the brands that they can buy that are so if you want to do a cake for your kid don't put those sparkle sparklings that are all color added if you want to do it i have a brand that use natural like beet colors or you know moringa those kind of things to uh make your cake look beautiful yet not unhealthy so the la the other one i stop on eating uh on a tree um yeah the, the a for uh take a breath is active mind and body so you need to exercise um so different ways of doing it like yoga walking and how that can really enhance your mind and body the t is being thankful gratitude is so so important and the last one i think it's the most neglected one hydration only 11 percent of our population drink enough water um so i recently just um i did a lecture about hydration and electrolytes you know the ones that are good and bad and why our water because if our brain is two percent dehydrated we can already have the symptoms of depression anxiety memory fog there's so much going on of because you lack water and some people just drink coffee drink energy drinks and the frequency of those when you drink those your body frequency just go really down so, so I have those ebooks related to those areas. My recent one that I'm going to be publishing soon, it's on tapping. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with emotional freedom technique. So I wrote a book for children. It's very, very cute. So Leo is going to go to a surfing competition. Leo is my teddy bear that represents my holistic school here in the island. So he's going to a surfing competition and he has this friend who's, who's going to teach him about tapping. Very cute story for kids. And I also wrote a book for parents to understand the science behind tapping and how it works and how when combined 
with essential oils can really help you with any type of, you know, struggles that you have. Like it's amazing how tapping has been successful during tests and research that we have been doing recently. And another one that I'm also publishing very soon, it's on my ABCD techniques with teaching parents about emotional intelligence, all these steps. Um, so A is acknowledgement, B being charged, C how to converse, communicate, and D how can we do differently. So it's a nice book. There's also a children's book that Leo teaches how to go through all the emotions, you know, so yeah, I have been busy lately for sure. And that's my passion. Oh my gosh. I love that so much. And please share for people who are not familiar with EFT tapping. Could you please share a little bit more about that? Yes. So emotional freedom technique. So it's based on acupuncture points. So there are some points in our body that, so let me back up a little bit. Emotions are, should be energy emotions, right? Every time you feel something, you should feel it and let it flow, right? So even if you're angry, you have to feel your anger, anger and let it go. Happiness, because we want to be feel happy all the time. This is just impossible, right? So whenever we get those emotions stuck and say, so I don't have time to feel angry right now, or I just, you know, something very bad happened and just I'm going to work and try to forget. That never happens. You don't forget. So I always tell when I'm presenting and talking about EFT, whatever you are not able to express into words, your body will express into pain. Right. And we can see when we take some pictures of your frequency of your body, we see the energy stuck in your body. Literally, it's just beautiful to see like those. Like, so whenever we see, we scan the body of a, a baby or a toddler happy, we see all the happiness and the light of happiness in all the body. When we see an adult feeling happy, it's just like, sometimes half of the body, sometimes it's just a third of the body. You, we are not able to feel happy like as, because and we see when children are angry, they are angry, right? They are really angry. When they're sad, they're, they're very, they, they feel their feelings. And as we grow, we teach them not to feel like, don't angry. Like, why are you crying? You know, just don't cry. And we learn how to hold. Then the happiness cannot overflow in your entire body because there's so much or different energies is stuck. So the EFT is basically, you're going to be tapping on some points of your body to let the energy flow. So it's very natural for you to start and you really need to acknowledge how you are. I'm feeling angry. I'm very frustrated. If I'm mad at Marilyn, okay, I'm very mad at Marilyn, what she did to me today. You just need to acknowledge that, right? And sometimes you start crying, right? And that energy starts flowing. And sometimes you start saying things that you say, why am I saying that? Just say it, just say it, you know, just let it go. And you help it, help it flow away. And it's amazing how you just, wow, I feel lighter. Um, and the essential oils, there are some essential oils that I, in my book that I combined with specific energies uh, or specific feelings that will help you even more to raise the frequency and to help let it go. So that's just a very quick summary. I don't know if you guys were able to understand, but it's just like there's some specific points. So, and you know, in Leo the Bear is going, you know, and there's a music for kids uh, based on if you're happy and, you know, like, so, and tap, tap, you're feeling angry, you should tap. So we're using the same rhythm as the, if you're happy and you know it, but we're teaching the points. Love that. That's Yes. Yeah. I'll just make it clear that Carla never gets mad, mad at Marilyn. Just oh, yes. <laughs> That's why never. Please tell us because I'm something that came up too is we are all humans. We're all breathing. When you say that breath is important, I would love for you to dive a little bit deeper because I think I understand what you mean. We're shallow breathers. Could you please expand on that? Wow. That's the shallow breather. So um, that's one of the techniques I use a lot on my preschool. So I have this holistic preschool that I just opened. We teach a lot of our kids to 
see their bellies going up and down. So, um, and hold the breath. So the square breathing, I, I think it's one of the easiest one. And it's very much, it really helps with anxiety, panic attacks and everything. So I do a lot of exercise with the square breathing or the five finger breathing, you know, where we take longer breathing. So, and I connect that with an essential oil and why I do that. The reason why it's because we are activating our limbic system to, it's like an exercise, what we just learned from our previous like interviews. You need to exercise your brain every day. So the more we breathe, you can do this. We do every day in my school and uh, I teach parents to do, it's just five minutes, put a book on your belly, do like hold and then let it go longer, right? Always. So if you're breathing in for four, hold for four, breathe out for eight, right? Always double it because you have to let it go, hold again, breathe in, hold, let it out for the double amount. Um, and the reason why I combine essential oils is because for kids it's easier because they have something that they can smell, they feel like, you know, but when you are having a panic attack and you have your essential oil and you can just breathe or just you know, see that you have it, automatic your limba limbic system is going to remind you, oh, you can breathe. So it's kind of a muscle, right? Because if you're going to try to breathe correctly during a panic attack or when you have an anxiety, it's not going to work. It's just train every day. And once you, this is close to you, it's like <gasps> your body's going to automatically you know, regulate it. So it's much, much easier. So I do the breathing and I do essential oils because sometimes it's, it's a, it's the easiest trigger. Like the, this is the easiest, you know, way to remember something, right? When you smell bread, oh, it takes you to your grandmother's house. I don't know, but that's the easiest and quickest way for you to activate your emotions or limbic, limbic system. So that's why I always like to connect with essential. So thank you so much for explaining that. And please tell the listeners uh, how they can find you. Okay. So I have, um, I am on Instagram. So I have my private, uh, my personal page, which is Carla at Globally Brighter, Globally Brighter. Um, and I also have my learn Instagram page. You can find all of the things there. On the Learn, you're going to find all my books there, too, on the Learn page, uh, and also on my personal page, which is going to actually, globally brighter, I'm going to change to Carla Garjaka only, uh, you know, in the next two months, because since I'm writing books, and usually people just Google my name, and Garjaka is not a very common last name, so I think it's easier just to put carlagarjaka.com. Uh, so I have the Learn, which is my school. You're going to have all the ebooks that I created based on the, you know, educational programs that I offer for parents, uh, ebooks that very informational. And I have my Foundation Matters, our foundationmatters.org, which is my, our nonprofit page, where we offer retreats, we offer mindfulness hike and events uh, for free or donated donation base our upcoming one is on may 18th actually here in hawaii if you guys want to join us we're going to go through all take a breath towards happiness and come to our retreat <laughs> i love that so much and please uh, share some last words before we um close out our podcast today i would love to hear so, um for me i really would like you to you know feel your feelings just be present, be mindful whenever you're doing anything. Like when you're eating, just enjoy the food, enjoy the taste, enjoy the smell, just be present. I think that's the one of the easiest thing we can do every day. And that can take you, you know, gratitude and being thankful is one of the easiest step for us to lead to a mental, uh, a healthy mind and body. So just be present and enjoy the next time you're going to eat something, smell it, taste it and close your eyes just for, you know, one minute and you're, you're going to see the difference. Be so Thank yes. you. Thank you much. And I am so full of gratitude.
for you and Danya being on the podcast. Also, I'm grateful for Mutual Aid Network who helped to sponsor this podcast. Mutual Aid Network is, oh gosh, such an amazing nonprofit that brings people all throughout the world together and brings their strengths together. So something that we do is we will trade services because and especially in other countries, if they're not able to possibly pay for services, they can trade and give value in that way. And so we all are helping each other. So Mutual Aid Network helps to bring all these different entrepreneurs or people with skills. For me, I love hosting Zoom karaoke. So we'll be helping that uh, that not over in June do some Zoom karaoke and we get to hear from people all over the world, different types of music and different types of singing. And so please join us for that if you're able to. And then also I wanted to talk a little bit about Frequency. So Frequency is the company that I have just loved and partnered with recently. And, you know, I was going through a little bit of a funk because life happens and wasn't feeling so well. And just learning more about frequency and raising our vibration. Our bodies are all made of frequency. And when we it consume things that remind our bodies, okay, this is the frequency that our body needs to be at or can be at, then it just raises like everything. So my aura has brightened. I have been able to get out of bed and feel like I have purpose and a spark again. And I just... I'm really thankful. This morning, I got a message from a woman who is going through, you know, that later age time of life where she's feeling a little bit toasty and a little bit moody. And she's just so thankful for nootropics and um, our trace minerals with fulvic acid to help detox her body and give her those minerals and just boost her brain. So please reach out to me if you would like more information, I'm on Instagram, Marilyn Nii Lamare, and Facebook. And I would love to uh, share uh, more as I learn more about frequency infused nutrition. So thank you again. Mahalo, everyone. Happy Aloha Friday, and we'll see you next month. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you.